Lely's portraits of this woman, Barbara Villers, Countess of Castlemaine, are at the heart of his creation of an image of Charles II's newly restored court. She, more than anyone, represents to us now, and represented during her lifetime, the restoration beauty. In her day, she was called pretty and whore, and someone even called her the lewdest as well as the fairest of all of King Charles's concubines. She was married in 1659 to a royalist courtier named Bar Roger Palmer. Barbara Villers was believed, however, to have begun an affair with Charles Stuart when he was on his travels and when, um, before he had been restored to the throne. Contemporary rumor had it that she spent the night of the king's return to Whitehall on May 29, 1660, in his bed. Such rumors were corroborated by the birth almost nine months to the day of a daughter, <laughs> Anne. The portrait that you now see was probably painted to commemorate the rise of Barbara Villers from Mrs. Palmer to Lady Castlemaine. Lely bases his pose on representations of the penitent, penitent Saint Mary Magdalene, especially those by Guido Reni, which you see here on the right. In, her port in Lely's portrait of her two years later, is ironically apropos, if to many, highly blasphemous. Like the Virgin's child, her child is the son of one who is more powerful, but in Barbara's case, the father was not only her religious leader, and you'll remember that Charles II was the head of the Church of England, but he was also her secular leader. Our only known contemporary report about this picture emphatically affirms both the identity of the female sitter and the roles that she and her son play. Charles Beale describes this in a sitter book as seeing, he goes around houses and writes what he sees, he sees a picture of Lady Castlemaine, quote, being as a Madonna and a babe. And in 1664, the queen had posed for her own painter, Jakob Heismans, a Dutchman, um, famously in the role of her name saint. So everyone was paying tribute to the queen by having their portraits done in the guise of St. Catherine. But certainly when the longtime mistress of the king, and by the time of this painting, the mother of five of his children, um, this, this compliment had a, a much more insulting uh, meaning rather than being a flattering one. And we do have to remember that the queen never had any children with Charles II, even though he continued to be married to her um, until his own death, but she never produced an heir for him. So I think it was even more poignant. I had to ask myself, what is the most obvious shift in the artistic landscape between the court of Charles I and that of his son, Charles II? I realized that one factor with two critical components was the determiner, determination for that shift. On the one hand, no longer did it seem that the king himself was leading the way in terms of patronage. And on the other hand, it was not the queen but in fact other women at the court who seemed to have taken up that role. Perhaps the most important female patrons immediately following the restoration were the two most visible and powerful women at the court at that time. The wife of the king's brother, Anne Hyde, Duchess of York, and Barbara Villers, the king's mistress. 